many recent groundbreaking discoveries of the Roman past demonstrate more and more how close they were to us over two millennia ago. Close in terms of architecture, roads, politics, laws, simple manners, and in a lot of ways how we shape our civilization nowadays. But what you wouldn't expect is that the Romans, possibly, were close to us also in nanotechnology and have developed something similar to it long ago. Kept in the British Museum, a mysterious object intrigues the most skeptical scientists. A 1,600 years old Roman chalice, known as the Lycurgus Cup. And this fascinating object could be the key to a new, super-sensitive nanotechnology. If you like archaeological news and stories about ancient Rome, subscribe to our channel. The British Museum came in possession of the ancient cup in the 1950s. The glass chalice was named Lycurgus Cup because it displays a representation of the god Dionysius' triumph over the king Lycurgus of Thrace. It is shown on the surface of the cup a scene of the Thracian king tangled in grapevines. It is an excellent craftsmanship. The inside of the cup is mostly smooth, and the outside was precisely cut to create a decorative cage-like structure around the inner cup. This kind of cups were mainly made during the 4th century AD. Around 50 cups were found, but most were in fragments, with only a few in an intact condition. The Lycurgus cup was the one in the best shape of all of them. But this is not what made the cup to be a one-of-a-kind discovery. The cup stands out because of an optical phenomenon that has astonished the experts for decades. The glass appears jade green when lit from the front, but blood red when lit from behind. The scientists were puzzled by this phenomenon until 1990, when English researchers analyzed some minor broken fragments under a microscope. They discovered that the Roman artisans filled the glass with particles of silver and gold. They had them ground down until they become as small as 50 nanometers, which is less than 1 to 1000, the size of a grain of table salt. Some may say the dust of the gold and silver were just subproducts of the works done in the cup and were not there intentionally. But the exact mixture of the precious metals suggests that the Romans knew exactly what they were doing. Apparently, there were also Fragments of other types of glass made into the process, suggesting it wasn't something common or cheap to make. By simply adding gold and silver in powder to glass would not produce these unique optical properties. The gold and silver particles need to form submicroscopic crystals or colloids to get this result. These colloids give rise to a light scattering phenomena that results in dichroic effects. The term dichroic originated from Greek and means two colors, and the effect is achieved when a wave of light is split in two different frequencies, or as our eyes interpret colors, in a very similar way like a prism works, but only with two colors. The name given to the glass by the scientists was dichroic glass. The ancient technique works because when the light hits, the electrons belonging to the metal flex vibrate in a ways that change the color depending on where the observer is located. The specialists believe that the technique used to make the cup can have more users than art. They are working on using this technology to diagnose diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, for instance. They are using prototypes of the Lycurgus cup in many experiments. For instance, a prototype was a hundred times more sensitive in detection of altered salt levels in a solution than some of the commercial sensors using similar techniques. Even though nanoparticles were discovered in ancient artifacts, we don't know if they truly know what they are dealing with. The Romans couldn't go beyond what they had achieved in the 4th century AD. We can only say that because of the lack of other more advanced technology that is likely not. They didn't know they were working in the nanoscale. The ancient artisans were highly skilled, but they were not nanoscientists as we know today. 
However, it is incredible that some of the Roman techniques still puzzle us, and we cannot perfectly replicate what was done more than a thousand years ago. The Romans couldn't go beyond what they had achieved in the 4th century AD, as the world was turning into the times of illiteracy and ignorance of the Dark Ages. All advances of the ancient world will soon be forgotten as the Roman Empire started to fade into oblivion, and the science and knowledge would have to wait at least a thousand years more for a renaissance, as from there on now only questions of fate would be asked, holy wars would be fought, and philosophy and science would be cast aside. It was not the time of the Roman Empire anymore. If you want to know more about everything we lost with the fall of the Roman Empire, subscribe to this channel and spread the message how much more people know about what we lost from the ancient world, more we are close to recover it. Tibi gratias agu, pro vigilabo. All the time new discoveries are being made. Recently a discovery just changed our understanding on how Egypt worked under the Greco-Roman times. Click on the video appearing on the screen to know everything about it.